if you were ever looking for algae eating fish, you may have heard of the Siamese algae eater. An algae eating fish also known to eat blackbeard algae. My name is Rizzy and welcome to FDG. If you've ever been on a lookout for an algae eating fish, the name Siamese algae eater might have come up at some point. I love this species. It has been one of the most favorite fish I have ever kept, and it's also been one of the most interactive that I've had as well. Just to make this easier, we're just going to call the Siamese algae eater SAE, just so it's easier to listen to and easier to hear. What does this fish actually look like? There's actually a debate on what the true SAE looks like. I'll refer to this near the end of the video. But for the most part, it has a white thin body, clear fins, and a black stripe going down the middle of its body. This fish can grow up to 15 centimeters in length or nearly six inches. So it won't grow super big, but it will still need a decent sized tank as it matures. For the type of algae it eats, there is something that's called blackbeard algae or BBA which almost looks like black hair growing out of your plants or decorations. Since the SAE is one of the only known fish to eat this type of algae, it has become quite popular in the aquarium trade very quickly. SAEs come from habitats such as rivers and streams that have a lot of rocks, logs, and thick plants to provide them shelter so they do appreciate it when you add this to their tank. In terms of general parameters, they are very adaptable. So general pH between 6.5 to 7.5, and a temperature between 24 to 26 degrees Celsius is recommended. One thing to note is that this fish requires water that has high oxygen. So I recommend using things such as air stones, or a good filter with a lot of water movement is recommended. If you keep live plants in your aquarium, these will also help add oxygen to the tank, as well as reduce the bio load in it. Unlike a lot of algae eaters you find in the hobby, they're actually very active swimmers, and since they grow fairly large, tank size will vary. Younger SAEs can live in smaller tanks from 40 liters or 10 gallon tanks, but as they get older, I wouldn't recommend anything smaller than 150 liters or a 40 gallon tank. As a general rule, the more aquarium space you have, the better. SAEs are a peaceful species, and they do well in tanks that have fish with similar personalities. The ones that I keep are super interactive, copying other fish, swimming up to you at the front of the tank, and even nibbling on my hand and my arm when I'm cleaning the tank as well. It's very cool to watch. They are an active fish, so you can keep them with other tank mates such as rainbow fish, reservoirs, more peaceful tetras such as like the rummy nose tetra or cardinal tetras. Even live bearers like such as platies, guppies, mollies are also a good choice. I keep them with gouramis, I keep them with a bunch of different plecos. I even keep them with beta fish as well, and that works out really well. If you do keep adults or slightly larger SAEs, you can keep them with larger community fish such as like bala sharks, medium-sized catfish like the pictus and clown loaches. More peaceful South American cichlids will work as well. This can be like angelfish, discus, geophagus, something that's less aggressive and more on the peaceful side. Try to avoid any fish that are more aggressive such as like the red tail or rainbow sharks, African cichlids, and predatory fish. While they are fast, the SAEs will not be able to fend off aggression for very long and can get stressed out very easily. So be sure to pick your tank mates properly and carefully. SAEs aren't picky eaters and will eat pretty much just about anything. Younger SAEs will forage around for algae on services of plants, decorations, but they do require a stable food source, just like any other fish you keep. They tend to feed around the bottom, 
but then they can learn to feed off the surface after a while with the right type of bit of fish. I recommend the type of sinking food in the form of a pellet or wafer if you can feed these guys. They are omnivores, so it's good to give them a mixed variety of meaty foods and veggie foods. There have been experiences that people say that I keep SAEs and they don't touch my black beard algae at all. Why is that? Well, young ones will eat algae as they grow and eventually begin to peel off that veggie diet and look for more protein in their food. My theory is that oftentimes they have been spoiled to the point where they actually become lazy and rely on our foods to keep them happy. In my experience personally, my younger SAEs have never gotten lazy. I'm still foraging around, nibbling on services of plants, looking for extra little snacks they can find. But I also believe it's because of the certain conditions I keep them under. There are four main conditions that I can see that might change these factors of how active they eat algae. Number one, keep them in a busy community tank. Lots of activity, competition, and that means they have less time to enjoy the food and hog all the food. So this helps them keep them very active and fit. So they always are active and looking around for food and algae off services rather than just hogging all the food that you provide them. Number two, feed every second day. It makes them less reliant on expecting food from you every single day. And I find they spend more time foraging around rather than expecting you to drop food into the tank. Number three, feed sparingly. What I mean is don't feed excess amounts of food that they end up hogging all the food to themselves, but also mix up the diet a bit. Don't give them too much meaty foods. Make it a balance of vegetables and meats in the forms of like maybe algae wafers and other types of different meats. And last but not least, number four. Now this is the one that I find that has the most success in my opinion, and that is keep them in a group. They do have that pack mentality. So usually when one starts to eat the algae and realizes it's a type of food source, normally the rest will understand and actually follow through. And by the time you know it, the algae might be gone in like less than an hour. In my experience as well, I found adult SAEs seem to lay off the algae majority of the time. But with the right conditions, I still actually see them nibbling on surfaces and cleaning them from time to time. So that natural behavior is there. It's kind of just been changed slightly because of how we raise them. Unfortunately, SAEs usually aren't breedable in captivity, or spawns that have happened are actually usually on, ac on accident. So if you're a breeder and you intend to try to breed this fish for profit, this might not be the best species for you. Because in the wild, when the rainy season arrives, when the rivers and streams become flooded, they will actually migrate upstream to their spawning sites where they will spawn with a new fluctuation of water volume and increased temperature. After spawning, they will often return back to the habitat downstream before the rainy season ends. So a lot of the SAEs that you will find in captivity on your aquarium store are often bred through commercial farms, usually through the use of hormones in which they spawn eggs that the males, males fertilize free floating. So don't worry, most of the SAEs that you find are not usually wild caught. Because they're so popular in the aquarium trade nowadays that they are made through profit through commercial farming. The Siamese debate has been around for years, often mistaking which species is the true SAE. You'll find that there's actually a picture online that shows all four species compared side by side with the appearances and the differences. But since I have the live examples, it might be easier to look at the live examples and look at them separately rather than looking at a piece of paper online. There is a very basic version and also a very advanced version in which I will make separate videos focusing on these topics later on down the line. But the main four that you'll find that I found in the debate are our main SAE, the Siamese Flying Fox, the False Siamensis, and also the Chinese Algae Eater, or the CAE. The way to identify them is that two of the four species on this list have a yellow slash gold stripe above the black stripe down the middle of their body. This will be true to the Siamese Flying Fox and also the False Siamensis. While our main SAE, has only one black stripe going through the middle of its body. 
and does not um, develop a yellow slash gold stripe above that black stripe as they get older. That's the one way you'll find out that it is the true SAE. When it comes to the Chinese algae eater, or the CAE, the main features that you'll see is that the CAE has a sucker mouth, which lets them latch onto surfaces or your tank wall, or like your rocks, or your caves, or anything they can latch themselves onto. You'll see they have that black stripe, but that black stripe is usually patterned. And this patterning will vary as well, with CAEs having a golden morph and also a marbled morph in the aquarium hobby as well. So they can often be seen as bright yellow or a mix of yellows, gold, and blacks. The SAE does not have the sucker mouth. While they do have a mouth that will forage for algae, they will not suck or latch onto surfaces in your tank. Oftentimes you'll find a nibbling around your rocks or decorations instead of like sucking onto one surface like what a bristle nose catfish would do or a placo would. And the SAE from this debate is also the most peaceful of the group, which they don't mind company, they will be peaceful with other fish, while the rest do have some aggressive tendencies scaling from slightly aggressive to highly aggressive depending on which species you get. So the SAE is the one that you would like to get if you're looking for a peaceful community fish and algae eater for your tank. It's not actually that hard if you actually have the live examples next to each other. Overall, just look for a white fish with clear fins and one black stripe going through the middlewood's body. And usually if you can do that, you will find the right fish for you. Thank you for watching our care video today. Our goal is to involve you guys in our videos as part of a community. We are here to enjoy our tanks together and we're here to share our fish together. We would love to involve your fish and your tanks as part of our videos in the future. If you would like to be part of an upcoming video, there will be a link to our Facebook page where we'll give you a heads up on what video we are doing next. Hope you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe for more care guides, and leave a comment if you found this video helpful. Keep those fishes happy, and we'll see you on the next one.